This week, we are covering companies in the just 100. Those are the rankings by Just Capital, and they're based on metrics, including paying a fair wage, sustainability, and disclosures around demographics based on polling of the American people. And for the first time, NASDAQ making that list of America's most just companies, ranking number 91. Joining us right now to discuss this is NASDAQ CEO Dean Friedman, uh, someone who's made a number of these issues uh, an important topic, not just for the NASDAQ company itself, but for so many of the companies that list on the NASDAQ. And when you go through the Just 100, something else I imagine you might be proud of, Adina, is that so many of them are NASDAQ-listed companies. Yes, I actually noticed that myself. Yeah, we're very, very proud of the companies that have made it there. And we're obviously very excited and honored to be a part of that list ourselves. So uh, speak, speak to this. You have made it a priority to, to address a number of the issues that, that clearly rank very high in terms of the priority list uh, for uh, the Just 100. Uh, they have, as uh, Paul Tudor Jones said yesterday, outperformed on the whole. Um, he believes as a result of this. Um, there were some skeptics yesterday when the list came out, and I wanted to ask you about this, because some people look at a list like this and they say, look, some of these are the most successful companies. They're making a fortune. They have great profits. And because they have great profits, they can afford to do some of these things. And that, frankly, companies that aren't as successful aren't in a position to do them. And it's sort of reversing the situation. Mm -hmm. I was hoping you might be able to weigh in on that. Well, I do think that it's important to recognize that every company is at a different stage in their life cycle. So younger companies that are growing and, um, and are, are really just trying to, to become a success, I think that they have, to have, they have certain priorities. But they can still focus on how they achieve their goals as, in addition to just what goals they achieve. And I think really when you think about what is Just Capital all about, it's really the how you're going about delivering those shareholder returns uh, and making sure that you're thinking about your communities around you while you do it. And some of those things can be significant investments, but there are a lot of things you can do that are not significant investments in terms of considering your employees and uh, being involved in your communities, thinking about the governance of your company, and then just managing your business in a way that manages carbon output um, responsibly. So I don't think that everything, you, you know, I don't think it's just because they're successful they have an opportunity to um, invest in the types of things that, uh, uh, that matter to the Just Capital group, but more as you are growing up as a company, are you thinking about all the stakeholders in the process of growing and expanding your business? One of the other issues is just simply disclosure, transparency. Uh, clearly, you, you rank higher on a list like this if there's more transparency. And so there's always this chick, chicken or egg question for a lot of companies, when do you disclose? I mean, some of these disclosures are increasingly being required, and I want to actually talk to you about some of them because I know they're disclosures that you are hoping more and more companies will have in the future, but, and they can become a forcing mechanism unto themselves. But if, if the disclosure doesn't make you know, isn't pretty, if you will, is it still work, m worth making the disclosure? Yeah, I think that, first of all, we are a disclosure economy. If you really think about the public markets and what the SEC requires, it requires disclosure to allow investors to make an informed choice. And you're right, there are certain disclosures that companies may say, you know, well, let, me, let me get better first before I disclose. I think, in fact, one of the things that NASDAQ did recently was we are disclosing now the, the diversity composition of our company. And that's not a required disclosure. And in, in some respects, you sit there and say, well, gosh, you know, I wish that it were better. Maybe I want to try to, to make it a, a, a better picture before I disclose it. But we made the decision, even though we know that we have work to do, to disclose that to investors and allow them to track our progress. I think investors really appreciate the ability to track progress. As we move ESG from this notion of, let me get started in my ESG journey, and a lot of companies have gotten started in really understanding how they can um, improve the communities around them and, and improve how they, how they manage their employees and, and, and their clients. It's now a matter of tracking progress, and we're kind of moving into what I would say the second phase of ESG, which is how quickly can companies move along and make a difference and have an impact. The only way that we can measure that is if it's disclosed. So I do think that Just Capital is right in focusing right. in on disclosures.